So we all up in the lunch line just walking. Next thing you know, I hear, hey, hey, do I know you? And I turn around like, what's up? He like, hey, do I know you? I'm like, nah, you don't know me. And I turn back around. Then I turn back around because I'm like, hold on, man. This dude do look familiar. And I'm like, where you from? He was like, I'm from Detroit. I said, what part? He's like, the east side. I said, oh, okay. So I turned back around. Make sure you know he like, hey, bro, your name Dante? I'm like, yeah, it is. Why, what's up? He was like, I thought that was you. Boom! Punched me in the back of the head. I come back like, boom, boom. So we in there mixing it up right there in the lunch line, right? Boom, boom. He over there. He, I'm throwing him. He throwing him back. Turn so we getting it on. The guards come over there. Break it up. First warning. First warning. Break it up. We still going, right? Second warning. Now, if he get to the third warning, he going to rack that thing back and boom, boom with the rubber bullets, right? So after he said second warning, I said, stop, stop, chill, 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 chill. Now, he didn't know about this because he kind of fairly new here, but I knew about this. So I'm like, yo, chill, chill, chill. So I bag off. He bag off. Guard say, get up out of here. Thank God he didn't lock us down. So I go my way, and he go his way. Next thing you know, the sergeant come down the hall. He like, I can't say my last name. Up against the wall, cuff up. I'm like, what's going on? Cuff up. So I turn around, I put my hands against the wall. He pat me down, put me in the handcuffs, and, and off I go to the hole. So I'm in the hole for about 30 minutes. And he come down and he like, so what was that fight all about? I'm like, I don't know. He like, so you just going around punching people? I'm like, I don't know who that dude was. I don't, I don't, I don't know, because I didn't know who he was, y'all. Let me tell y'all what really happened, okay? Back when I was out in the free, so he was coming out the gas station and I walked up to him and I was like, you gonna have to give me all that. And he like, give you all what? And I had to, you know, the um, the shiner out. And he was like, oh, for real, bro? You gonna do me like that? You gonna do me like that? I'm like, yo, I gotta get me. I gotta get mine. I got to get me. Don't make me do this to you. Don't make me do this to you. So I walked up on him. I'm like, yo, do not make me do this to you. Just give it up. It ain't not, nothing you got is worth dying for. Give it up. So he like, all right, bro. All right, bro. So I said, matter of fact, turn around. Put your hands up. So I had him turn around with his hands up like this, y'all, right? So his hands up, and I'm telling him, spread them. So he spread them. I'm tapping the pockets, going through his pockets. I'm going through his pockets. I'm going to pull it out of the phone. I'm going to pull it out of his wallet. He even had a hairbrush, right? I took that, too. I said, all right, man, get up out of here. He like, all right, all right, I got you. I said, you got me what? You got, you got me what? What you got? You got me what? He like, all right, all right, all right, you got it, bro. You got it, bro. And he dipped off. Now, let's get back to prison. So this is the dude that I robbed that popped off on me. Now, the reason why I'm telling y'all this story is because sometimes, you might be doing things out in the streets, and it might catch up with you when you get locked up. So remember that. Sometimes you, you'll commit crimes out there in the street, and then sometimes it will catch up back with you while you locked up. So I'm in a hole trying to figure it out. Like, man, I don't, I, cause I already didn't know at that time. So we're going to say two weeks later, I end up getting out the hole, and I'm, I'm back on the block. So then I end up seeing him on the yard, and he just looking at me. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, man, so one of my homeboys like, hey, man, what's up with dude? I'm like, man, that's the dude that popped off on me. Then he was like, man, let's go over there and go do something to him. I was like, no, let me just, let me just see where this play is right quick. So he ended up walking, walk, walking towards me, y'all. So y'all know me. Y'all know me. I stayed with the you-know-what. I stayed with the you-know-what. So I instantly go in my waistband, right? I'm gripping. So he kind of stopped. He like, 
yeah, yeah, you know who I am now, don't you? I was like, yeah, I know who you is. I didn't know who he is. He was like, yeah, yeah, I told you I was going to get mine back. I told you I was going to get mine back. And I was like, so so what? what's up? So my homeboy was trying to step up. I was like, no, I got this. I said, what's up? He like, well, what's up with you? I said, is, we, is, is it done or, or what? Because if he would have said that it was still on, I would have whipped out and it would have it would have been a Pope gang. The Dante Show. Rambo got a phone call from his cousin, Londell. Londell like, yo, cuz, James them over here right now at the park. Rambo like, say less, I'm on my way. You see, Rambo and James got major beef on the streets. No matter where they at, it's that when they see each other. But it always wasn't like that in the beginning. You see, they was homies until one day they went out to the club. James' cousin accidentally shot Rambo girlfriend in the head, killing her instantly. And Rambo wanted his get back. And James said, that's not going to happen. So this is why they beefed out. From that day on, a couple of shootouts here and there between both camps. Nobody died, though. Another crazy thing about this whole story, y'all, is that Rambo is James' nine-year-old daughter, Godfather. So, yeah, this beef that they got going on is crazy. So Rambo jump in his whip. And he about 10 minutes away from the park. And yes, he do got that strap. Now, James' car is parked right out front of the entrance of the park. He come Rambo, bend in the corner with that strap out. And he... When James realized what's going on, he get to run it as fast as he can towards his car. But Rambo will stay. Doom, 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 doom. So James have no choice but to hit the deck. After about 10 to 15 seconds of this gunfire going off, Rambo finally hit the corner and get up out of there. James then get up and run to the passenger side of his car and open the door. And guess who lay in there? His nine-year-old daughter. She was in the car. She got hit three times, but she was still alive. So James hurried up and closed the door and ran to the driver's side to get in to rush his daughter to the hospital. But then Londell rolled up and he hit James five times, instantly taking his life. As time will have you, Londell got picked up by them boys in blue. And shortly after, Rambo did too. You see Londell got pointed out by a couple of bystanders that actually witnessed this crime. Spoiler alert, Londell was not built for the penitentiary, so he turned state against his cousin Rambo. Even though Londell actually pulled the trigger that ended James' life, and due to James dying, unable to take his daughter to the hospital to save her life because Londell put five up in him, Baby girl did not make it. She succumbed to her injuries. And well, her body got put on Rambo also. Because Londell turned state. You see, that wasn't the only information that Londell gave them folks. He told them folks about two other homicides that him and Rambo was involved in. He even told the boys in blue about how Rambo was pushing P in the hood. Told them everything. Mo, He put it all out there on the table. Yo, why have enemies and friends when you got family like Lindell? As time will have you, Rambo copped out to 40 years to life, avoiding the death penalty. Well, Lindell, he's somewhere out west in protective custody. Rambo, months later, is on the yard walking down his 40 years to life sentence. When this dude named Creed had the eagle eye on him. You see, Creed is James' uncle, and he's been down for 20 years, serving a double life sentence. As Rambo heads down to the weight pile, here come Creed also. Rambo is now bench pressing, and a dude by the name of Big Four is spotting him. However, unbeknownst to Rambo, Big Four is actually Creed's homeboy. 
So the play is set. After the fourth press, Big Four and Creed switch places. It happened so fast. Due to YouTube policies, I cannot tell y'all what happened. However, I will tell y'all this. Rambo Windpipe was crushed. He didn't die, but the end result was given a new nickname. What is that new nickname? Whispers. The Dante Show. Welcome to another episode of Dante's Prison Stories. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, or I'ma push that blade. Back in 05, Nelson would find himself in the MDOC prison system, AKA Jackson State Penitentiary, and yes, that is in Michigan. If y'all haven't seen the other video that I made about sweet old Nelson, make sure y'all go check it out. It's called The Gay Guy Prison Story. So anyway, Nelson to make his rounds around the compound, leaving a trail of foolishness, gossip, and a whole bunch of drama and messiness. He will have guys in there fighting over him that took on the role of the man role in the homosexual lifestyle. You see, Nelson, he got around. Like Pac said, I get around, I get around. He is what you would call a prison whore. And the crazy thing about it, he had a main dude up in there. And I'm going to put homie name out there. Because what you do in the dark, she'll come to the light. So I'm about to blow up the spot. Dude name was Robert. Yeah, he was in there busting down Nelson up in them cells. Late at night, you can hear these two cats arguing. Like husband and wives. 99% of these arguments stem from Nelson getting caught up of doing some foolishness with another man. I remember some nights, I can't even sleep because these dudes so loud arguing like females. I'd be like, hey man, cut that shit up, man. Man, would y'all go to bed? I mean, absolutely drama and foolishness. I remember one day, y'all, Nelson come strutting out of his cell with these booty pants on, right? See, you get these state penitentiary pants that they give you, but what he did, he cut them into shorts and had his butt cheeks hanging out of them. His husband, a boyfriend by the name of Robert, I told y'all, I'm blowing him out there. He got to get exposed. He come out there like, hey, man, get back in here, man. Get back in here, man. Why you dressed like that? Nelson like, you don't own me. I can do whatever I want to do. You, you don't dictate what I do. Robert like, hey, I'm not playing with you, man. Get your butt up in here. Nelson just got the kept walking off. Nelson was on his way to the child hall, a.k.a. the lunchroom, where we go eat at. So now Robert, he comes down the stairs and he's chasing after Nelson. When he get up to Nelson, he grabbed Nelson by the back of his neck. It was like, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you to take that off? You won't be wearing that type of stuff out here in front of all these dudes, man. That's me right there. That's me right there. Get your butt back in that cell. Nelson like, get your hands off me. I'm not your property. Get your hands off me. So a guard by the name of Rodriguez see this unfold and, and he like, yo, Robert, let him go. Let him go or you get locked down. Let him go, Robert. He like, all right, man, all right. He said, man, Nelson, get your butt in there and change some clothes, man. I'm not playing with you. So Nelson's like, all right, all right. So Nelson went to the cell with Robert and then they're arguing. Sidebar, y'all. Don't nobody want to see that foolishness. Yeah, especially for us heterosexual straight men out there. We don't want to see no dude coming out the cell with, no, with his butt cheeks, his ass cheeks hanging out. Come on, man. Y'all hit that like button if y'all don't play them type of military mind games. Let's get back to it. Robert in there talking about, that's only for my eyes to see. That's only for my eyes to see. You minds. You minds, man. Stop playing games with me. But, hey, y'all, it is what it is. This is prison. If you don't want to go to prison and see these type of crazy things unfolding, stop committing crimes. Now, let's get back to it. When that spat broke out, there was this older cat by the name of Baron. And he rocked that way. When he seen Nelson and Robert get into it, he figured this is his chance to slide in. So keep that in mind, y'all. So Baron ended up going to the chow hall. Now, about five minutes later, after this lover's quarrel was going on up in the cell between Robert and Nelson, Nelson come out the cell and he pimped straight to the lunchroom. 
when he get to the lunchroom, Baron pulls up on him. He's like, hey, Nelson, check this out, man. I've been looking at you for a long time. I don't appreciate how Robert be talking to you, man. You you can do better. You can do better, man. You don't need that clown, man. I'll take care of you. I'll protect you. I'll make sure don't nobody do nothing to you in here, man. I will never put my hands on you, man. I, I'm, 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 I'm just saying, what's up? What, what's up with it? Nelson, like, first of all, I don't need nobody. I don't need no man. And I'm good. And I, I will tell Robert on you. Baron was like, listen, I'm not trying to hear that, man. Matter of fact, you know what? Bow! He smacked Nelson. Backhand him. Boom! Nelson go, oh! Why you hit me? Why you hit me? And he just ran off crying. Oh, oh, well, he hit me. So he get back to the pot. He like, oh, Robert, 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 Barry hit me. Barry hit me, Robert. Robert come out the cell like, Nelson, what's going on? Oh, hell no. What happened, baby? Baby, what happened? Robert, Robert was trying to push up on me and I told him, leave me alone. So he gonna smack me. Oh, Robert like, Baron, Baron. Man, I told you stop being friendly. Why was you being friendly, man? I told you to wait for me, man. I told you to wait for me. Why would you go down there by yourself? I told you to wait for me now. So he like, man, Robert, Robert, man, I'm sorry, Robert. This Nelson. I'm sorry, Robert. Robert, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I should have listened to you. I should have listened to you, Robert. Robert. So he like, ma'am, 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 go, go, go to the cell. Go to the cell. So him and Nelson, they go to the cell. And I'm assuming, I'm just assuming, y'all, I don't know because I wasn't in the cell. But when he went to the cell, he came out with phone books, like, padded around his back and his sides and his chest in his chest for all you felons out there y'all know it's about to get real and i'm assuming he going to go look for baron he go looking for baron he don't see baron so he comes back to the pot and he go back to his cell and i hear him and nelson and they're arguing now this part right here y'all i did not hear it from my own two ears but my homeboy has a cell right next door to them and this is what he told me he said that Nelson and Robert was in there planning a hit out on Bear at 3 o'clock when they go out there on the yard. Let's fast forward this, y'all, straight to the yard. So you got Robert over here by the basketball court with Nelson. They all booed up and hugged up, right? When Barron hit the yard with his homeboys, Robert, like, kind of moved Nelson to the side, and he went in his waistband and pulled out that sword of justice. So he pimped over there to Baron and was like, yo, what's up? Baron was like, what's happening? He was like, you hit my bitch? He was like, man, don't come over here with that boy, man. Keep your bitch away from me. Robert like, what? Baron was like, hey, listen, I told you already. Keep your bitch away from me. So, so Robert, true to his form, true to his fashion, he pulls out that sword of justice. Baron... I guess he didn't want that physical altercation. He backed up like, yo, bro, chill. Yo, bro, chill. It ain't even like that, bro. Bro, it ain't even like that, bro. It ain't even like that, bro. You going to do this over a chick? You going to do this over a chick, bro? Come on, bro. Don't do that, bro. Don't do that to me. I'm going to let y'all know what he's doing. He trying to bring attention to the scene so the guards can see what's going on. Because I think he didn't want that physical altercation with Robert. So he drawing all that attention over there to them, talking about, man, they didn't even like that, bro. Bro, he, he should have been more like, guards, help! Guards! Guards, help me! He trying to stab me, guards! That's what he should have been doing, right? But he like, bro, he didn't even like that, bro. Bro, man, they didn't even like that, bro. You gonna do this over a girl? You gonna do this over a chick? So Robert, peeping what's going on, he hurry up and put the sword of justice back in his waistband, and he back out, and he like, yo, don't say nothing else to my bitch. Don't say nothing else to my chick. So he walk off. So you got the guards over there looking like, what's going on over there? Hey, y'all break that up. Break that up. So Robert bagging off like, yeah, yeah. So as he bagging off, he heads over there to Nelson. And Nelson like, why you ain't hit him? Why you ain't hit him? He hit me. You shouldn't have hit him. Robert like, man, I just took care of him, man. Chill. Nelson like, man, you ain't never going to protect me. You going to let anybody and everybody do whatever they want to be in here. I'm sick of this. So 
Robert like, man, didn't I say shut up, man? I told you I'm going to take care of it. Nelson like, man, I don't know about this. I don't let, I don't know about this. You letting dudes hit on me and stuff, man. I, I don't know. I didn't sign up for this. So Robert like, man, I told you to be quiet. You need, keep your mouth closed. I told you I got this. So now Nelson standing there with his arms crossed like this, with his lips are poked out like, mm, mm, okay, all right. After this situation, Barry ended up leaving and going back to his pod. I thought that he was leaving to go grab that sword of justice and apply that pressure on Robert and Nelson, but he did. About 10 minutes later, lock down, lock down. Everybody get down. Everybody get down. Right? They done came out there full tactic gear. The turtle squad, the goon squad. Barry! Barry! We all have to get down. If you don't get down, they ain't giving no warning shots. You're going to get popped with that rubber bullet. And I told y'all before, I seen the damage that that rubber bullet can do. I seen a man lose his eye. You better get down or you will pay the consequence. So we all hit the dirt. They run straight over there to Robert and Nelson. Jacked him up, put him in a full Nelson. <laughs> hey, he like, man, what's up? What's up, man? What's up? And they jacked him up and they own him. I'm talking about they own him. Robert like, man, let me go, man. What's up, man? What's up, dog? What's up, man? What's up with it? They did a full shakedown on him. He got caught with the sword of justice. And when you get caught with one of those, in that climate, day of time, you go into the box for a very long time. And well, this is what happened to Robert. He ended up catching eight months in the bing. If y'all want to know what the bing is, it's the hole. He ended up going to the hole. Y'all know how Nelson get down. Nelson ended up getting with another cat and that's another story of Nelson. If y'all want some more Nelson stories, let me know in the comment section. If you I'm enjoyed out. this prison story, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't became a member yet, what you waiting on? If you're not subscribed, what you waiting on? Bless that Cash App. Bless that PayPal. I enjoyed y'all. Hopefully y'all enjoyed me. I'm out. I was in the hole for about two months when the investigation finally ended. Sweet Low and his punks and Big Al and his crew was moved to different parts of the compound. Some of these dudes actually got transferred to different prisons. So as time will have you, I ended up in the cell with this cat by the name of Bullet Head. Now I'm going to keep it all the way a buck. Dude head was shaped like a real bullet. But if you talk to joke <laughs> on him, try to bid on him, and what do bid on him mean? Is when you trying to laugh and joke and clown this dude for your amusement to make your time go by in prison? Well, he would display an extreme act of violence on you if you wasn't in his circle. You just ain't going to walk up to Bullethead and get to talking bad about him, joking on him, without him displaying an extreme amount of violence toward your body. Y'all get what I mean. So I ended up in the cell with this dude. So here's the scene. When I hit the cell... He had to get cuffed up and go to the back of the cell until I got uncuffed. When the guard walked off, Bullethead told me straight up, hey, if you want the top bunk, you're going to have to fight for it. If you lose, you're going to sleep on this floor. I'm looking at him like, what is this dude? So I guess judging by the look on my face, Bullethead made the choice for me. He took off on me. I'm not going to say I lost. I'm not going to say I won, but I'm going to tell you all this. It ended in the draw with both of us being hamped up against the lock. He said he was done. I said I was done. I ended up getting the top bunk. So he started taking his stuff off the top bunk and putting it where he was putting it at. So he was like, yo, where you coming from? I was like, I just came from the hole. He was like, word. I was like, yeah. He was like, what you do? I was like, eh, I don't really want to talk about it. He was like, man, come on, bro. We finna be in here for a while. What you do? I was like, nah, I don't really want to talk about it. He was like, hold up. Wait a minute. Is you one of them punks that was fighting with Sweet Low and y'all jumped on Big Al? I was like, heck, no, I wasn't one of them punks, man. He was like, oh, okay. I said, but yeah, I was in that situation, though. He was like, oh, you Dante. Oh, you Dante. I said, yeah. He was like, man, dude, you was pure comedy, man. Man, hey, that was crazy, dog. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, man, I don't know how I got swept into that BS, but it is what it is. He like, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I feel. He was like, hey, wait a minute. You do know Big Al got a hit out on you. Yeah, I heard about that too. He was like, yeah, but ain't nobody, ain't nobody messing with Big Al, man. Big Al, he don't even pay cats, man. So ain't nobody really tripping off that. I was like, oh yeah. He was like, man, ain't nobody thinking about no Big Al, man. He was like, but for real, what like, what really happened though? I was like, well, I was like, so I was just standing there and next thing you know, it just popped off. Sweet Low and his punks, they just started going head up. So y'all, when the fight popped off between Big Al and the punks and Sweet Low, he thought I jumped in and socked on him, but I didn't. I was just trying to get out the way, but he thought I got off on him. So he wanted to get his get back, y'all. So here we are. So Bullethead was like, yeah, man, that's a whole bunch of shenanigans and foolishness, man. You know how prison is. Yeah, but you and Big Al going to have to settle that, though. Y'all going to have to straighten that out, though. I was like, yeah, I know. Bullet was like, hey, I know some of his people, though. I can get word to them to let him know that you don't want no issues. I was like, no, I don't do that, man. I don't need nobody speaking for me. I don't need nobody taking up for me. I got this. He then was like, well, I'm going to still put the word out. That I don't want no mess going on in my cell. So if they want to deal with you, they can deal with you outside of the cell. But I'm not having no foolishness up in my cell, though. I said, yeah, I hear you. I had no choice, y'all, but to respect that. Because this is our house. like our home. You can't be bringing no drama and no foolishness, even if I was the cause of it. So I had no choice but to respect that. A couple days ago by when I got word that Big Al got out the hole. And he sent some messages at me to say, yo, I want to holler at you in the chow hall at dinner time. This was not good for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's only one way in and one way out of that chow hall. So if you find yourself in the chow hall and something pop off and you outnumbered and they got cats on the door. Nah, -uh, not me. So it's like a death trap up in there. The second thing about the danger of the chow hall, you got some of them COs in there with that you know what, that spits out rubber bullets. So you could be in there mixing it up, right? I done seen this happen before too. No cap. It was these dudes in there fighting. They don't get no warnings. They just start shooting. And well, one of these cats got hit in the eye with one of them rubber bullets. He lost his eye. But I want to paint the picture a little bit more gruesome for y'all. Okay, imagine like this orange pus oozing out your eye. Ow! And, oh man, dude, whole just his whole his whole eye right here was obliterated. Ow! And just orange ooze, just oozing. Now he's screaming. He holler, I can't see. Ah, ooze juice just spraying everywhere. See, let me holler at the young cats out there that might be watching this video. Stop committing crime. Ow! Stop taking your freedoms for granted. Do what you got to do legally to survive out there. I know it's hard out there. It's harder outside than being inside the pen. In the pen, you ain't got to pay no bills. You get three meals a day. In the real world, yeah, you got bills. Yeah, you got responsibilities. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you ain't got to worry about. But at least you got your freedoms, though. Because once you get behind them iron gates... Ah! And get in themselves is dog eat dog. You can lose your life for nothing. Just like that. It's no hammers in there. Ow! It's straight up man to man, fist to fist, <laughs> knife to knife. And before I go on with this story, y'all, y'all better hit that like button before I push that blade. Ow! And yes, haters that ain't hitting that like button, that is a threat. If I don't get you in real life, I might show up in your nightmares like Freddy Cougar. Stop playing games and hit that like button. Also, I'm going live every day for the month of February. So y'all turn on them notifications. Now let's get back to the story. So I told the dude that told me that Big Al wanted to holler at me at the char hall. Like, nah, I'd rather talk to him on the yard. So he said, okay, bet. And he rolled out. At this point, I hollered at a couple of my homies to let them know what the play was. I told them, basically, I'm about to get at Big Al today on the yard. And I need for y'all to stand by just in case somebody want to jump in. So that was that. It was about 3 p.m. when we was headed to the yard. And I ain't gonna lie, y'all. My heart was beating like crazy out my chest. 
I wasn't scared. It was just a whole anticipation of this whole thing unfolding. So me and my dudes, we posted up on the south end of the track. So our position was to see the whole yard, especially the entrance door where everybody coming out of. Then about six minutes later, he walks in, Big Al, and some of his homeboys. So it was about five of us, and it was four of them. So we had an extra man just in case we had to mix it up. So somebody was going to get a two-on-one special. So we on point, y'all. So at this point, Big Al and his guys over there by the weight pile, but they ain't working out. They just looking at us, and we looking right back at them. So after about two minutes of eye wrestling, Big Al and his boys mobbed towards us. So I'm like, all right, y'all, here you go. So when he got about three feet away from me, I'm like, what's up, man? So he was like, oh, you thought you were just going to punch on me on some sucker shit? And I was just going to let that ride? I was like, look, dog, I didn't touch you. And he was like, man, I'm not trying to hear that. I said, look, you ain't going to keep on pressing me about something I didn't do. What we going to do? Then I just whipped out. And he was like, oh, it's like that. It's like that. So he whipped out. And then his homeboys whipped out. Then my homeboys whipped out. So we right there in the standoff. Everybody gripped up. Now, due to YouTube new policies, I can't be real descriptive of what happened next, y'all. Because I'm trying to get paid. So y'all got to bless that cash app and hit that like button for that real raw content. But just because I love y'all so much, I'm going to go ahead and give it to y'all. There was a lot of bumping. There was a lot of grunting. And a whole bunch of blood, sweat, and tears that was shed on that yard that day. So after this melee, I end up with two puncher rooms. Y'all see it. They got me right here. Ow! And they got me right here. But hold on, y'all. I wasn't the only one that took an L that day on the yard. You can believe that. Big Al got that buck 50 right Ow! there. And two of his homeboys got airlifted up out of there. The rest of us misfits will find ourselves back in the hole where we will serve that good old fool loaf. Mm, mm, mm. You jail dudes know what I'm talking about. That good old 23 and 1. Hey, at least we didn't die. I mean, this is prison. I'm out. Big Cadillac was transferred to a level 4 maximum facility for the assaults that he put on the officer and the inmates. His secret was exposed of him being a homosexual, and he was not feeling that at all. The cat was out the bag. He was so mad at his secret getting out to the point if anybody was heard whispering anything about that, he would run down on him with that blade. So what you do in the dark yard will come to light. Yo, Big Cadillac, be mad at yourself. So one day, Big Cadillac was in the chow hall and this gay guy by the name of Rita approached him. Rita told him, hey, do you want to party with me? Now Rita was the type of gay guy that you would call a boy, which is the female version of a gay guy in prison. Big Cadillac, still in denial about his sexuality, was like, man, get your out my face. <laughs> now, at this time, y'all, Big Cadillac was barking at Rita. So everybody seen this take place. So Rita took tail and got up out of the chow hall. It was about two days later when Rita was coming from the library and Big Cadillac was coming to the library. When Rita noticed Big Cadillac coming her way, he ducked his head like this and tried to walk past and Big Cadillac was like, yo, hold up. Rita was like, yeah, what's going on? Big Cadillac was like, hey, listen, about the other day, I ain't mean to spaz out, man. You know how it is around here, man. I can't have my name and no foolishness around here. You know what I'm saying? Rita was looking at him like, well, what are you talking about? What What do you mean? Big Cadillac was like, listen, man. He looked to the left. Then he looked to the right, down the hallway. He was like, listen. I really like you, but you can't tell nobody. I got a rep to, to uphold. Check this out, y'all. He ain't got no rep to uphold. He already been exposed. He the only one that's lying to himself. Let's get back to the story. He like, yeah, I got a rep to uphold when my name can't be up in no foolishness. Then he put his hand like right here and was like, <laughs> and gave Rita a kiss. 
Now, I was just coming down the hall, y'all, when I seen Big Cadillac pushing away from Rita. So this is how I know what went down. When Big Cadillac seen me, he pushed off, was like, man, watch out if I knock you out. He again spashed out on Rita again, calling him her all type of derogatory names. In my head, y'all, I'm like, man, cut it out, man. We already know how you get down here, man. Man, do you, man. You ain't got a front for me. I'm little old Dante, man. Stop fronting, man. But I'm saying this in my head, y'all, because I didn't want them problems with Big Cadillac. But Big Cadillac basically switched on Rita. He was like, you better watch what you going, man. Walk with your head up. If you ever bump into me again, I'm going to crack your dome piece. Rita was like, all right, all right. And he, she took off running down the hall. At this, y'all, I'm shaking my head like this dude doing too much. So now I go to the library. Now, Big Cadillac didn't come into the library or Rita didn't come to the library. Next thing I hear is a code being called. All hands on deck is required. The whole jail about to go on lockdown. Apparently, this dude by the name of Parnell walked into the East Wing shower room where he walked in on Big Cadillac and Rita getting it on. I guess Parnell startled them. And I guess because of Big Cadillac being ashamed of his sexual deviancies, he had to push that pressure on Parnell. Imagine this, y'all. Imagine Big Cadillac want to hurt Parnell because of his sexual indiscretions. Yo, Big Cadillac, you make me sick. So Parnell and Big Cadillac in their thorn. Boom, boom, boom. Rita, hurry up and get up out of there. Rita screaming, help, help, help. you gonna kill him, help, help. When the guards got up in there, they seen Parnell in a bloody pole. So they pull out them ninja sticks, them black sticks, and get the whooping big Cadillac out. They hit him with that taser. They hit him with that rubber bullet gun. Boom, boom. Oh, don't worry, y'all. They gave big Cadillac all the smoke. The next day, the word spread it around the compound like wildfire. I told y'all in prison, man, men are the biggest gossipers in the universe. They say women gossip. I keep telling y'all, men is the biggest gossipers in the world. I'm talking about everybody was talking about it. Now, at this time, y'all, Parnell had some homies on the compound that wasn't feeling what Big Cadillac did to him. So they got the plotting on getting him off the compound. However, when the guards was in the shower room whipping Big Cadillac out, he ended up getting his sixth vertebrae cracked, resulting in him going to the local hospital to get surgery. Parnell suffered a major concussion and the right eye socket being fractured. If y'all like these Big Cadillac stories, let me know in the comment section. Until then, y'all hit that like button and stop playing military mind games before I push that blade. The Dante Show. There was a guy on the compound by the name of KB. He was a massive titan that displayed extreme violence towards other inmates in the administration. He was a no-nonsense dude with a big chip on his shoulder and dared you to touch it. Most inmates stayed away from him due to his aggressive behavior. You see, before KB found himself locked up with the rest of us, he was running with the 49ers practice team until he got hurt on the field and they no longer needed his services. And what was the result of them cutting him? He lost his income, which led to him getting involved into moving illegal substances and pushing that hammer on people that might want to violate him by coming up short with that money or coming up short with that product. In 2009, he had found himself on the run for aggravated assault on a police officer. You see, KB was shorted on a little sum. So he upped the hammer on the dude that shorted him on the product, had them turn around, spread his legs, spread his hands, and gave him a full shakedown. Turned his pockets out and started getting what was owed to him. When an off-duty cop yelled out, Stop, police! KB then punched the dude in the back of the head with the butt of the hammer and took off down the alley. The off-duty cop took off after KB. After a short foot chase, KB ducked behind some garbage cans. When the cop ran past the garbage cans, KB sprung into action and got the pounding on him. Hands and feet was activated on this cop. He had him pent down gorilla style. Boom, 
Boom, boom, boom. He then hears other cops in the distance saying, hey, stop, police, police. KB then cocks back and hit the cop as hard as he can in the back of the head. Bow! Knock the cop out cold. Then he get up and take off running down the alley again. At this point, the K-9 unit is on the scene and Rover is on all fours right behind KB. KB running with the hammer in his right hand. He turns around and pow, 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 pow. Rover is no more. See, KB wasn't with all that dog biting action a couple weeks ago by. And the guy that KB originally had spread it out there that tried to short him on that you know what, gave the police all the information that they needed to get a no-knock warrant for KB Creed, which led to the apprehension of Kevin Jerome Bell, AKA KB. Now let's get to it. My first time seeing KB was when I was on the yard. I saw this huge guy standing over there by the basketball court. What stood out about this guy was that he was the tallest, biggest dude that I ever seen while locked up. Now I'm a pretty big dude myself, but standing next to this dude, I was like a shrimp. I mean, this cat was about 6'8", 300 pounds, a pure mean machine. So anyway, he's standing there watching these guys play four on four basketball. When a guy airball and hit KB in the arm, KB then take the ball and chuck it across the yard. One of the basketball players was like, hey nigga, you gonna go get that ball. KB, without no warning, ran up on the dude and put them hammers on, causing the dude to fall to the ground unconscious. KB then turned to the two cats and was like, what's up? They was like, no, we good, we good, while they was helping their homeboy up. And KB just turned away and just walked off. I know for a fact, that it was this guard by the name of Mr. Dinkles seeing all this unfold. And he did absolutely nothing about it. Probably in fear that he didn't want no smoke with KB. The next time I would see KB, or should I say be in close proximity of this monster, was in the chow hall. I was three people behind the next person getting served in the lunch line. When I noticed KB just skipped the line, there was a white guy that we call Spud because he had a head shaped like a potato. He was country than a mother. Spud was like, say man, don't you see everybody in here waiting in line? KB turned around and was like, white boy, don't you ever talk to me like that. I'll punch you all in your chest and make you my wife. Then he looked at everybody down the line and around the lunchroom was like, and ain't none of y'all ain't gonna do nothing about it. As soon as that last word left KB mouth, the guy that he cut it right in front of directly took his tray and was like, BAM! KB went to stumbling. And the dude got to hitting him with the tray. Boom, 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 boom. Spud ran down on KB too, hitting him with some rib shots. Boom, 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 boom. For a second, I thought KB was about to get handled by these two inmates. Then KB just grabbed Spud by his ankles, snatched him down, and got the pile on him out while the other dude that was hitting him with the tray he grabbed him by his collar, brought him down, and got to working him out. Unleashing the storm of uppercuts. On these two now victims of KB. It was about four or five guards that rushed in and dogpiled KB. They started hitting him with the batons. They started hitting him with the mace. Y'all know me, I hit the deck immediately and grabbed a piece of the wall in the back corner. I wasn't trying to inhale none of that mace and trigger my asthma. Anyway, looking back at this melee unfold, for one split second, I thought KB was going to dominate them officers. But fatigue set in and well, they whipped KB out. It was like Thanos fighting the Avengers, but they whipped them out. They cuffed them up and sent them to medical. Now word spread it throughout the compound that KB needed to get put off the yard because he was such a huge threat to all the other inmates. When he first got there, the Bloods approached him. The Crips approached him. Other various black gangs approached him and he turned all of them down with disrespect, but nobody wanted to smoke with him. So naturally, he had to go one way or the other. So when Spud and that other guy did what they did to KB in the lunchroom, it bought the gang some time. 
So word got out that the Bloods was going to carry this hit out to get KB off the yard. I had a cellmate that ran his mouth about the Bloods business. You see, he was a Blood himself that just couldn't hold water for nothing. You know the type when you tell something to and before sundown, everybody on the compound know your business? Well, that was him. Oh, don't worry. He got violated by his game many a times for running his mouth. They didn't put him off the set because he was a soldier and he had pushed that blade whenever needed. And that's valuable while locked up. And that's valuable to an organization. Knowing that they got a soldier that'll push that blade at any given moment. So anyway, my bunkie telling me like, yo, I'm gonna hit up KB when he get out of medical. I'm like, you doing it by yourself? He's like, yeah. I said, dude, you better get some backup. He like, man, I ain't worried about him, man. I'm gonna walk up to him and I'm gonna put that blade in him and just what it's gonna be. I'm like, you see what he did to spud them in the lunchroom, right? He was like, no, I ain't see it, but I heard about it. But I mean, he just one man. Plus, plus my homie's gonna be standing by if anything go wrong. I'm like, all right. If you enjoyed this KB episode, make sure you hit that like button. I'm dropping a new video every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button. I'm out. Welcome to another episode of Dante's Prison Stories. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Or... Look y'all, we ain't gonna waste no time. We gonna get straight to it. Before we get straight to it though, I need for y'all to hit that like button and share this video before I pull out that sword of justice. Freaky Freddy was a 55 year old prison freak. Now Freaky Freddy get down was gunning. Gunning means when an inmate masturbate while looking at a female guard or he might do it towards other inmates. So Freaky Freddy was notorious for gunning on male and female guards. Freaky Freddy did not discriminate. That's just how he got out. So when he got assigned to my cell, I booked on the officers and I told him, yo, he ain't coming up in here. There's no way he's coming up in here. I was like, yo, Officer Clark, under no circumstances, Fred coming up in this cell. Officer Clark then responded, he coming up in there. He coming up in there. Or you going to the hole. Make a choice. You ain't got no choice in the matter. Or you do got a choice. Either he's coming in that cell with you because you don't run nothing up in here. Or you going to the hole. So make a choice. I was like, yo, I'm not going to the hole. But on the flip side, he not coming up in here, man. Y'all got to put him somewhere else. There's other cells open around him. Y'all can put him in there. Officer Clark then was like, well, all right, turn around and cuff up so we can go to the hole. We'll sort it out while you in the hole. I then was like, look, man, I'm not cuffing up, man. I'm not cuffing up. But he ain't coming in here, man, for real, man. Don't put him up in here, man, or it's going to be a problem. Officer Clark then was like, so you threatening? You making threats? Is that what you doing, Dante? You making threats? I'm like, no, I'm not making no threats. But I'm saying y'all can't put him up in here, man. Dude ain't right, man. Something, Dude is weird, man. So then Officer Clark was like, okay, and you should have never got locked up. Stay out of prison. Stop committing crimes, and you ain't got to deal with this. But in the meantime, he coming up in there. So either cuff up so you can go to the hole or Fred coming up in here. Now, Freddy then heard my protest about his blockade of coming in the cell with me. So when Officer Clark locked us in together, Freddy was like, yo, check this out, young blood. I ain't got no issue with you, but it's obvious seem like you got an issue with me. Do we got an issue? He couldn't even finish his last words when I took off on him. At that point, y'all, it was nothing else to talk about. He already made it known, y'all, that he was going to buck on me. So it was only one thing to do. It was time to get out. I'm going to keep it all the way funky with y'all. When me and him got to throwing out, oh, he was throwing them back, too. So I'm going to keep it funky. I was throwing them. He was throwing them back. And um, y'all, Freaky Freddy, yo, he when he was throwing them, he was throwing them fast, and he was throwing them hard. Freaky Freddy could hit hard. So as we both going at it for about 15 seconds, we both grab each other, we both lock up against the locker. 
So we got each other against the locker, and I got both of his arms like to the side, and he got my leg wrapped around his leg. And I'm like, yo, you good? You good? He like, you good? You good? So we just going back and forth. Now at this point in time, y'all, we hear them guards' keys rattling, and we did not want to go to the hole. So we uh, both agreed mutually to stop this combat. So we let each other go. Officer Clark got to our door. He was like, was that y'all making that noise? Freaky Freddy was like, no, nah, that wasn't us, man. That was down there. That was a couple of cells down there. We heard it. it was down that way. So Officer Clark just walked off. So Freaky Freddy was like, you straight? I was like, yeah, I'm straight. Is you good? He was like, yeah, I'm good. So after Freddy put his stuff in his locker, he jumped on the top bunk. All right, y'all, this is a sidebar to this story. I would never get the top bunk. I'm going to tell y'all why. I heard a story, a prison story, where a guy was sleeping at the top bunk, and the dude he had beef with came in the room, grabbed him by his legs, and ganked him out the bed, right? This is like a five, six feet drop. When he hit him, when he pulled him off the bed, his head cracked on the cement. That's why I would never get the top bunk. Now, let's get back to the story. So Freaky Freddy like, yo, what's your deal, homeboy? What's up with you, man? Why you got an issue with me for? I don't even know you, man. Why you acting like that towards me? I was like, yo, check this out, man. I already heard about you. I already know how you be gunning and be disrespecting your celly. And I'm not having none of that foolishness up in this cell. You ain't going to be sitting up there gunning while I'm up in here. Matter of fact, you ain't going to be gunning at all while in this cell, period. Freddie was like, hey, nigga, I'm a grown man. You can't tell me what to do up in here. Little nigga, I'll beat your then he was like, you ain't the warden, you ain't my daddy, so you ain't gonna talk to me like that. So as I was sitting on the bed, I got the breathing in and breathed out. So I stood up, I was like, hey, this ain't gonna work out, man. You gotta roll. So as I'm saying this, y'all, I'm standing up to the side, I'm standing on the side of him, right? So he kick at me like, boom! But he missed me, so I'm like, oh! So he's kicking at me, so this is his feet coming my way like this, like this. And I'm doing like this, like, yo, I'm, I'm grabbing, so then I finally grab his leg, right? Then I grab the other leg, and I'm trying to pull him, trying to yank him off the bed. Hence that side bar, so I'm trying to yank him off the bed, and he holding on to the bar like this. I'm grabbing him like this, like, come on, get off this leg. He kicking, he fluttering and all that. So I'm trying to get him and snap him off the bed. I'm about to do pretty dirty. So I'm grabbing him like this. We making all this commotion and we hear the keys jiggling again. So I'm straight trying to get him up. I'm like, I can't go to the hole. So I let him go and I hear him get back in my bed. Officer Clark, he reached the cell. He like, yo, what is y'all in here doing? Why is y'all making all that noise? Freddie like, hey, man, ain't, ain't nothing going on. So Officer Clark was like, man, hey, if I hear some more noise up here, I'm telling I'm locking both of y'all down. I'm like, we good, man. That ain't even us. He like, all right, all right. Then he walked off. I was like, check this out. Stay out my way. Don't touch nothing that's mine. Freddie Dead was like, you ain't going to keep telling me what I can and what I can't do up in here, man. I know how to do my time. You ain't going to tell me what I can do and what I can't do up in here. I was like, you know what? We ain't getting nowhere with this. So when the cell doors pop, I'm going to go to the control booth and I'm going to ask to be moved. When the cell doors popped y'all, I instantly went to the control booth and I told the guard, I said, yo, y'all got to get him about my cell. The guard, it wasn't Officer Clark, it was another guard. He was like, what's going on? I was like, I just need him out my cell, man. They like, yo, you got to you gotta tell us, is he threatening you? Do you feel like you ain't safe? I said, I'm not saying none of that. I'm just saying he got to go, man. Me and him cannot coexist in this cell together. The guard like, listen, if you can't tell me what's going on, I'm not moving them. It's just, just it, flat out. I'm not moving them. So either tell me what's going on, or I, I just say, you know, all right, man, whatever. And I just walked off. Now, listen, y'all, I was out of the cell for about 15 minutes, and Freaky Freddy never came out the cell. I done made my mind up that he about to go one way or another. Freaky Freddy got to go right now. So as I'm heading to the cell, and I open the door. Guess what I see? Freaky Freddy got a pitcher holding it up to the sink and he gunning. I didn't even give him a chance to pull his pants up. I came in the cell, was like, boom, 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 boom. Right, put the dogs on. Bam, bam, bam. Bing, 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 bing. Nigga, Lordy, gun. 
He literally got caught with his pants down, ass out, penis out. So as I'm punching on him, he's like, yo, yo, chill, yo. He's trying to cover up down there. Yo, chill, yo, yo, chill. I'm, I'm like, boom, boom. He's like, yo, chill, chill. I'm like, boom. I'm, I'm giving it to him, y'all. Look, I'm like, boom, I'm hitting him. Boom, I'm like breaking him down. So he's trying to pull his pants up at the same time. Wow, boom, boom. Man, I must have jumped back and hit him hard in the side of his head, like, boom, right? He was in the daze. He was like this. Right? He was like that. And then he just fell out. Listen, y'all. I max Freaky Freddy all the way out. The guards already heard the commotion. So they already was on their way up there. When they got up there, cuffed up. I had to cuff up. Off to the hole I went. The guards showed me a little love, y'all. They didn't give me no ticket or no infraction for this fight. Because they already know how Freaky Freddy got down. So I did a whole two months in solitary confinement. And Freaky Freddy, well, he got shipped on the other side of the compound where he would continue to spread his reign of terror of gunning. If you enjoyed this prison story, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't became a member yet, what you waiting on? If you're not subscribed, what you waiting on? Bless that Cash App, bless that PayPal. I enjoyed y'all. Hopefully y'all enjoyed me. I'm out. You have just messed your life up and you in here with me, white boy. When you pee, you sit down. If I catch you peeing, standing up like a man, I'ma crack your dome piece. Keep this cell clean and keep it smelling fresh. When you get commissary, I need all that. Because just like a woman, you need to be led. And I'm your leader. When we outside this cell together, you are not to look at another man. Walk with your eyes to the ground. Matter of fact, grab my back pocket. Do you understand? Do you comprehend? Do you get that? White boy, you belong to me. Welcome to prison where you got inmates that's predators and prey. Meet inmate Sweet Low. Real name, Cavante Clark. Real name, Cavante Clark. A 41-year-old African-American from Queens, New York. List of charges, aggravated assault, home invasion, assault on a police officer, assault on a court officer, and of course, attempted kidnapping. The list is long and violent. Before we go any further, y'all make sure y'all hit that like button. Cavante Clark, aka Sweet Low, was locked up in the early 2000s. The judge gave him 38 years for his contributions to his community. When Sweet Low first got to the doghouse, he had a chip on his shoulder. He was mad at the world. He was known to assault inmates and officers all the same. Now, Sweet Low wasn't always sweet until his fourth year of being locked up. There was a 19-year-old white boy that found himself in the doghouse for vehicular manslaughter. You see, he was getting white boy wasted, and he found himself behind the wheel one summer night. And well... Two people lost their lives due to drinking and drive. Sidebar, you never know what time you're going to go. So make sure you ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins on the daily. Now let's get back to the, the judge gave him 10 to 17 years for the crime that he committed. We're going to call him White Boy Steve because me just calling him White Boy kind of sound kind of racy. And I'm not racist, so we're going to call him White Boy Steve. So White Boy Steve will find himself in a cell with Cavante Clark a.k.a. Sweet Low. When white boy Steve was in a cell with Sweet Low, when the guard walked off, Sweet Low got up. White boy Steve stuck his hand out on some nice to meet you type of stuff. Sweet Low swallowed his hand, was like, man, get out of here with that nice, I ain't friendly. Sweet Low was like, yeah, I can tell already. I ain't gonna like you at all. You got the top bunk and you better not be moving around at nighttime breaking my sleep. I'm gonna bust your dome piece. If my sleep get broken, your jaw get broke. We got rats in this prison. So do not leave no food out at night. Matter of fact, give me all your commissary and I'm going to put it in my locker. When you need something, then you holler at me. And matter of fact, let me let you, I'm going to let you know this right now. Don't you ever go in my locker and take anything. Now give me all your commissary. Steve standing there like, what did I just get myself into? Sweet low then was like, where's my manners? Let me welcome you. White boy Steve was like, huh? Sweet Low with an open hand was like, boom, smacked him right in his face, almost knocking him out. But Sweet Low hurried up and grabbed him by his shoulders and threw him on the bed. At this point, y'all, Sweet Low is not no homo. 
Right now, he just bullying him and extorting him and establishing his dominance over. Now, there were some other white guys in his pod, but I just got to keep it a hundred. They was dope fiends, so they was not going to come to white boy Steve rescue. So they wasn't going to step up for Steve. He was in there on his own. Heck, they had their own issues that they had to deal with. Sweet Low now them bent down and got face to face with him. He like, this is the sale rule. And you better not break not nan one up. Number one, don't ever touch nothing of mine. Number two, if you got to take a crap, Matter of fact, you can't even take a crap in this cell. You better get out this cell and go to one of them dope fiends and go use the bathroom. If I ever catch you in here taking a crap in here, I'm going to bust your dawn piece wide open. If I ever catch any piss on the floor or on that toilet seat, I'm going to bust your dawn piece. Matter of fact, you sit down when you pee. Only men stand up. If I ever catch you standing up peeing, I'm going to bust your dawn piece. And if I ever catch any pee on this toilet, I'ma kill you. Whenever you get commissary, I needs me. I gotta get mine. Let you not give it up. I'ma bust your head to the white meat. Do you understand? I said, do you understand? Steve nodded his head. Sweet Lo was like, boy, I, I said, do you understand, boy? Steve was like, yeah, I understand, sir. I understand. This was Sweet Low establishing his dominance over white boy Steve. Steve was terrified. He ain't never been in this type of situation before. He ain't never had this type of pressure applied to him in nowhere, shape, or form in his whole life. It was just like he just woke up into the Tales from the Crypt scene. Like he just walked into the Twilight Zone. He ain't never going home. This here, right here, is hell. As the weeks progress, Sweet Low has not let up, not even an inch. Still displaying his dominance and mad aggression on white boy Steve. He would slap him here and there, take his food, totally disrespect him. He even made him give up his bed and his pillow. Whenever the room would get too cold, Sweet Low would make Steve give up his cot, his pillow, and his blanket. Sweet Low was doing him dirty. Sweet Low wanted all the comforts that prison life afforded him, even if that meant inconveniencing Steve. Now, I know a lot of y'all thinking, why didn't Steve just go tell the CEOs what was going on? Well, when you got terror and violence all around you and you see the guards being filed towards inmates, well, what can you do? Either you're going to be prey or you're going to be predator. One day in the cell, Sweet Low got a letter from his sister. Hey, I need for you to read this, Steve. Here. Steve Light. Okay, this came from your sister, Diana. She said that she loved you and that things took a turn for the worse and that Sweet Light, what? Well, finish reading. She said that it took a turn for the worse that she's dying for cancer. Sweet Low was like, what? Man, give me that. Even though Sweet Low can't read, he looking. So he just balled it up. And he go sit on his bunk, put his hands in his face like this. You see, Sweet Low didn't have no family out there on the outside. He was a ward of the state, in and out of foster homes, group homes, lockdown facilities. So when he turned 19, he found out that he had a twin sister. He finally wasn't alone in this world. Now he finds out that the only family that he got is about to pass away due to cancer. For the next couple of days, Sweet Low was quiet. He really wasn't doing too much. He just stayed in his bed, went to chow, and kept quiet. This was the first time white boy Steve had any peace since he'd been here. Sweet Low never really believed in God, but he was praying to God that his sister would get better. The Friday at 4.45 p.m. when a chaplain came in and said, Mr. Clark, I hate to inform you this, but your sister, she 
passed away. Sweet low on he uttered, thank you. And he laid back on his bed. During this time of sorrow for Sweet Low, Steve actually felt bad for Sweet Low. And he started to console him. It'll be all right, bro. It's all right, bro. You'll be good, bro. Imagine that, y'all. Imagine that. The mighty, mighty terrorizer Sweet Low. And now the victim. The victim consoling him. Making sure he good. I'm guessing in this time of sorrow and pain and anger that Sweet Low was going through for the loss of his sister, this is when his mind snapped. Sweet Low like, I ain't got nobody in the free world. I ain't got nothing to come home to. You know what? This is my home. This is my world. This prison life, this is just what it's going to be from here on out. I may indulge in every sinful vice that prison have to offer. This just what it's going to be. My reality is this. These four walls is my reality. And this my home. And well, y'all, this is where Cavante Clark turned into Sweet Low. One day, Steve and Sweet Low was on the yard. They was doing laps around the track. When this black dude walked up to Steve and was like, dang, you got a fat. Sweet Low was like, what you say, nigga? What you say? Dude turned around was like, I said he got a fat. Sweet Low was like, bow. Jabbed him. Boom. Right in the mouth. They got throwing down right there on the yard. Boom. 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 Sweet Low jumped back and hit him with a, a dual kick. Boom. When dude hit the flow, Sweet Low got the stomp in the mouth. Steve was like, yo, chill, 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 chill. Got to push the sweet low back. Luckily, the guards didn't see this happen. Or off to the hole, sweet low would have been gone. Hey, y'all, sweet low knocked him out. When Steve and him got back to the cell, Steve was like, yo, thanks, man, for having my back out there. Sweet low was like, you know what? We family. We family. We got to take care of each other up in here. And you know what? I apologize for treating you like crap, but I was going through something. But we family. Yeah, we family. Come here. Give me a hug, bro. If y'all want some more sweet low stories, make sure y'all let me know in the comment section. Until next time, be safe. I'm out. The Dante Show. Welcome to another episode of Dante's Prison Stories. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, or I'ma push there that There was play. a guy by the name of Lil Rob on the south side of Chicago. He was running with the BDs, and he was known to keep that grip on them. And he was more than willing to bust that thing if needed be. One day he was coming out the gas station when his ops spotted him. As he was turning the corner, three of his ops emerged from the south end of the store and began firing shots his way. He got struck three times, y'all. One in the hip, one in his back, and one in his leg. The one that he caught in the leg hit his main artery. The three cats that bust down on him took off running and disappeared in the cold night of Chi-Town. Lil Rob at this time was trying to stand up and get away from the scene, but his legs was too weak due to the blood loss. He found himself getting real dizzy and then he lost consciousness. At this time, y'all, it was 10 p.m. at night. When he finally woke up, y'all, he was in the hospital, handcuffed to the bed. You see, in that exchange of fire, that hailstorm of bullets that Rob and his ops was doing back and forth, where the store clerk got hit with one of them bullets. And well, he lost his life. And well, when the ambulance in Chicago PD pulled up, they found Rob's gun laying right next to him. It didn't take long when they matched the shell cases to other homicides to that gun that belonged to Rob. Remember y'all when I told y'all Rob got hit in the leg and it hit a main artery? Well, to save his life doing surgery, 
the doctors had to make a decision to take his leg. They amputated Rob's leg. We're going to skip past all the court dates and the trial shenanigans. He blew trial, y'all. They gave him two L pieces. That means two life sentences without the possibility of parole. Now we are at the Pontiac Correctional Center in Illinois. Here's a little quick update, y'all. While Lil Rod was fighting this case in Cook County Jail, he denounced his gang. He dropped his flag. He felt like his homies wasn't holding him down the right way that he felt that they should have been holding him down. Yeah, sure. The homies and lockup was holding him down. They made sure he was good. Here go the situation, y'all. Let me explain this just a little bit better. See, on the outside, Lil Rob had a connect that he can get them things for a cheaper price. Lil Rob, being who Lil Rob was, he let his homeboys get some of his work on consignment. They figured, well, Lil Rob locked up, and what he gonna do? We ain't gotta pay him back. He locked up. He ain't, what, what can he do? See, y'all, the streets don't got no love for you. No love at all. Yeah, they get in the car with you, pass you the pistol, and go look for an op and take their life of a person that look just like you, that look just like them, right? But when it's time to do that penitentiary time, oh, you on your own. You on your own, bruh. Yeah, yeah, you on your own, bruh. You got that. You got to walk that time down. Us jail dudes call that out of sight, out of mind. It's when you locked up and everybody out there in the free world, since you not present in their life, they forget about you. But let's get back to this story. So with Lil Rob, seeing that the gang life wasn't really what it was, he dropped his flag, y'all, and he converted to Islam. The problem with that, y'all, is that some of the BDs behind the wall was expecting for him to come and come with that bag. Now we back in prison, y'all. So when Lil Rob finally pulled up on his block and got settled in his cell, the guys, a.k.a. the BDs, pulled up on him to get him the rules and regulations and the politics of the prison. Oh, yeah, and about that pack, too, that they was waiting on. After hearing them out, Lil Rob made a near-fatal mistake by saying that he don't bang no more and he converted to Islam. They was not trying to hear that. The politics at this time, y'all, if you touch a fellow Muslim without going through the proper protocol, it's lights out. However, in Rob's case, the Muslims didn't know that he was a Muslim. He just got there and he didn't check in. Nevertheless, one of the enforcers of the BDs was in attendance for this whole conversation and told Lil Rob, yo, you in prison. You can't just drop your flag and switch on us. We were suspecting that pack. And well, you owe us a tax. You can join the Muslims. Cool. But you owe us a tax. That gotta be paid. Lil Rob was like, what you mean a tax? The enforcer then told all the little homies to get out the cell right quick. I'm about to holler at him one on one. So the guys left off the cell and they stood watch outside the cell. The enforcer was like, hey, look. The way I look at it, you owe the gang. And what we could have made off of you, I'm thinking we would have made about 30K off of you this year. So that's what you owe us. Since you want to switch sides, you responsible for that debt. Lil Rob was like, what? What you mean I'm responsible for that debt? That don't even make no type of sense. As soon as that left out of Lil Rob's mouth, the enforcer grabbed him by his shirt yanked him up out of his wheelchair, shook him like this, and threw him on the floor. He like, man, what you, man, stop. Some of the homies was looking back in the cell like, oh, snap, oh, snap. He kicked Rob about six times in his back and three times in his upper shoulder. One of the dudes outside of the cell was like, hey, G, chill, chill, here come a guard, here come a guard, chill, chill, yo, G, chill. Now, y'all, outside of the cell, it was about nine members huddled around the cell so the guards have to come up there and see what was going on. When the enforcer heard this about the guard on his way up there, he hurry up and picked Lil Rob up and put him back in the chair and warned him that he better not say nothing. 
And then he pulled out that sword of justice and got real close up on him, put that thing at his neck and was like, you say anything, I'm telling you, I'm going to end you right here. I ain't playing no games with you. I'm telling you, say anything to that girl. I'm telling you, I'm taking you out. Lil Rob like, all right, man. All right, all right, man. I ain't no snitch, man. All right, man. Then unfortunately, like, yeah, yeah, all right, all right, because I'll do that to you. I'll do that to you. I'll do that to you. Straighten up your face, man. When the guard got to the cell, he was like, you don't belong in here. What you doing in here? The enforcer like, oh, no, I'm just bringing a little homie home. I'm just bringing him home. That's all. The guard like, hey, I don't care what you talking about. You need to get up off this cell before you get a ticket. Enforcer like, I got you. I got you. We good. We good. I'm about to leave out anyway. Stay tuned for part two. If you enjoyed this prison story, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't became a member yet, what you waiting on? If you're not subscribed, what you waiting on? Bless that Cash App. Bless that PayPal. I enjoyed y'all. Hopefully y'all enjoyed me. I'm out. Welcome to another episode of Dante's Prison Stories. Hit that like button. About 9 to 10 years ago, I was dubbed Mr. Mr. Minute by my friends and family because I could not keep my black tail out of the county jail. It was like every other two weeks, I find myself locked up. I just keep getting locked up. On one of my extended stays in the Oakland County Jail, I will find myself in the bullpen with this Somalian. Now, if y'all watch my morning shows in the morning, y'all might have heard me tell this story before. But due to the high demand of this story, I'm telling y'all the story in the prison story. Well, here's that full story of the mistaken arsonist. So after I got out of processing, I got put in the tank with about 20 other delinquent criminals that found themselves on the wrong side of the law. So we all in there just kicking it, and this Somalian dude just rolled up on me. So I'm like, yo, what's up? He like, hey, um, did anybody ever tell you you look like Amari Hardwood? No homo, no homo though, but you look like Amari Hardwood. I was like, yeah, I get that sometime. Hey, do y'all think I look like Amari Hardwood? Let me know in the comment section. So anyways, I'm like, okay, so what's up? He said, oh, nothing. I just came back from court and they just pleaded my case down to disturbing the peace with my plea deal being time served. I was like, oh, you about to get out of here, huh? He like, no, nah, man, I'm not going home. I'm like, what? You ain't take the plea deal? He was like, no, nah, I ain't take it. I said, why? He then was like, number one, I'm innocent. And number two, I got a civil lawsuit against the city of Novi. And if I take a potential plea deal of admitting that I'm guilty, it could blow my potential chance of suing that city successfully. So I'm standing there like, what's this civil lawsuit about? What are you talking about? Okay, y'all, this is when this story takes a crazy twist and a crazy turn. You see, this Somalian dude was dating this white girl. He was 18 and she was 17. Her parents, of course, did not approve of this relationship. But wait a minute, y'all. It wasn't due to no racist stuff at all. Her parents didn't approve of him because of his track record. And what's his track record? He couldn't hold a job. He was lazy. He didn't finish school. With saying all that, they raised their little princess to be college prepped. She went to the best schools. So y'all know how that is. Their family was like the social elites and no vibe. So this Somalian dude, bad look. And moms and pops wasn't having it at all. Oh no, not our little angel. Uh-uh, she ain't about to throw her life away. Uh-uh, that's out. Here's a bombshell, y'all. Baby girl, the little princess, well, she's four weeks pregnant. Now at this time, y'all, there was a serial arsonist in a subdivision. So anyway, one day, she ended up calling this Somalian dude over to the house to talk. When he pulled up and got out the car, she was sitting on the porch. She said, hey, I got to talk to you. It's real important. So he sat right next to her. She looked him right in his eyes. She was like, listen, I'm pregnant. And um, I'm getting rid of it. He was like, why would you do that? Why would you kill our baby? Why? Don't do that. Why would you do that? She was like, look, I'm going to college, man. It ain't nothing here for me. It ain't nothing here for me. I, I don't have nothing here. I'm going to college. He was like, what you mean ain't nothing here for you? I'm here. I'm here. What you mean by that? You don't love me anymore? She like, listen, I can't stay here, man. I, I cannot stay here. I, I'm going off to college and I'm getting rid of the baby. He was like, don't do this to me. 
Don't do this to me, baby. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me and our unborn child. Come on, man. Don't do this, man. Don't leave, man. Don't leave. I'm sorry. I'll do whatever you want me to do. She's like, no, I already made my mind up. I've been thinking about this. At this point in time, y'all, her daddy is in the window watching this all go down. All right, y'all. It's about to get real. Now, according to the Somalian dude, he told me that he never, ever put his hands on baby girl, ever. After him pleading, telling her, please don't go. Don't get rid of the baby. Please stay with me. She said, no, I'm leaving. When she finished saying that, he grabbed her arm forcefully and snatched her off the porch and was attempting to drag her through the yard to his car. When the front door bust open and here come daddy charging through the yard, boom, he knocked the Somali dude on his back. Don't you ever touch my daughter. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Take my daughter. Get your hand off my daughter. He over there beating him. He punching on him. Daddy punching on the Somalian. Boom, 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 boom. Don't ever touch my daughter again. So the Somalian dude on his back, like, stop, stop, man. Come on, man. Stop, I ain't doing nothing. The daddy's like, man, what's wrong with you? Don't you ever touch my daughter again. She says she ain't. Boom, boom. Leave. Don't ever, don't ever touch my daughter again. The wife come out like, Charles, get off of him. Charles, no, let, let me go. Let me go. Boom, boom. Don't ever touch my daughter. Charles, Charles, let him go. Get off of me. Susan, get off me. Susan, get back. I'm telling you, if you ever touch my daughter again, I'm going to kill you. Don't ever touch my daughter again. Charles, let him go, Charles. No, don't ever touch my daughter again. Don't touch her again. After these barrage of punches, the Somalian dude seen the opportunity to get out and run. So he took that opportunity and dipped, jumped in the car, and peeled off. Now, y'all, when this incident took place, maybe three or four minutes before this fight actually popped off, the arsonist struck again in the neighborhood, and the police was alerted, and the police was already on their way to this neighborhood. Due to the Somalian dude just getting into this altercation, his adrenaline was rushing real crazy. So with me saying that, he was going around 60 to 65 miles per hour in his subdivision. When the police was coming this way, he was coming that way, boom. So the police put two and two together, right? And they said, that's the arsonist. So they got behind him and it was a little high speed chase through Novi. They ended up fish telling him, Pulled him out the car, and well, y'all already know what time it is. Police brutality. They dropped the long arm of the law on him. When they pulled the Somalian dude out of the car, it was a bunch of bumping, a bunch of grumping, a bunch of oohs, a bunch of ahs. They beat the brakes off of him. He just got a whooping by the daddy, and now the police whipping him out. Like a DJ scratching, whip, 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 whipping him out, whip, 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 whipping him, whipping him out. All this over a domestic violence call. And he said, he like, dang, all this over a domestic violence call? Nah, they think you the arsonist. Okay, y'all, let me paint the scene right quick. You got the watch commander, the police chief, and the mayor. All the big wigs done pulled up in front of the county jail. The dog and pony show was in full effect. You see, they think that they apprehended the Novi arsonist. They jumped the gun. Hence, this is why he filed in that civil lawsuit. But wait, y'all. I don't want to gloss over one of the most terrifying parts of this story. Because this could have went a whole nother way. What if he got her to that car? What if the Somalian dude got the white girl to the car and successfully drove away? What do y'all think would have happened to her? Let me know in the comment section right now, what do y'all think he would have done to her if he would have got her in the car and drove away? Inquiring your minds want to know. If you enjoyed this prison story, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't became a member yet, what you waiting on? If you're not subscribed, what you waiting on? Bless that Cash App, bless that PayPal. I enjoyed y'all. Hopefully y'all enjoyed me. I'm out. KB hit the pod. He wasted no time establishing his dominance on other inmates. When KB arrived at his cell, his bunkie was holding down the bottom bunk. KB walked out of his cell 
and got on the tear and screamed out, yo, who in cell 15? I said, who in cell 15? This white dude by the name of Richard said, that's me. That's me, I'm in cell 15. KB was like, yo, come here right quick. Hurry up, man, hurry up, man. Come here now. When Richard reached the cell, KB was like, get your shit and get at the top. Richard was like, excuse me? KB was like, motherfucker, did I stutter? I said, get your shit and get at the top. Richard then was like, hey, before he could even get the EY out of his mouth, KB rushed him like that and pinned him against the cell door and was like, dude, I'm not going to ever tell you again. Get your shit and get at the top before I tear you up in here. I did ask for your opinion. Then he slung him. When KB slung him, he grabbed Richard's stuff and threw his stuff on the top rack. Now, Richard had two homeboys that rocked with him only on the strength that they was the only three white dudes up in the pod. When they heard this altercation going down, they took up off the stairs. It was like, yo, man, leave him alone, man. Hey, leave him alone. KB then looked at him and was like, and if I don't? The two white dudes at that point backed off because they didn't know what to do. So the white dudes went to their cell. About five minutes later, KB emerged in front of their cell with a laundry bag. He pushed past the two white boys and started going through their stuff. Start putting Mountain Dews in the bag, hot Cheetos in the bag, ramen noodles in the bag. The white dude was like, yo, yo, hey, what you doing, man? Chill. What you doing, man? Chill. KB was like, man, watch out, man. Man, watch out for I do something to you. As KB filling up his bag, the other white dude go, bow. Punch KB right in the jaw. Boom. KB turned around was like, bow. Bow, boom, boom, boom. Dropped the white dude. The other white dude, he curled up. He curled up against the cell door like this. Like, man, come on, bro. You ain't got to do that to me. You ain't got to do that, man. Man, just take it, man. Just take whatever you need. Take whatever you need, bro. You ain't got to do this, man. So KP turned and looked at him. He was like, you going to do something? What you going to do? The white boy took off off the cell. They got the screaming, bloody murder for the guards. Help! Help! KB then walks out of their cell very casually and go back to his cell with their commissary. At this particular time, y'all, there was three guards that was in our pod. But they didn't want to deal with KB because they knew about his history about assaulting guards. And on this particular compound, they just let him be. Meanwhile, KB is inside his cell now. And Richard is sitting on the desk shaking. KB was like, yo, you got any cookies of Swiss Worlds? Richard was like, yeah, I got some. I, I, I got some. KB was like, well, where they at then? Richard then was like, I got some over there in the locker, but I owed them to somebody. The cookies in there, I, I owed them to somebody. KB totally disregarded what Richard said. Went to Richard's locker, opened it up, seen a bag of cookies, and got the munching on them. Richard then was like, man, I told you, man, I owe that to somebody, man. I owe that to somebody. KB was like, okay, in, in, handle it then. Do something about it. Richard was like, man, come on, bro. I owe somebody that. Come on, man, don't, don't do that to me, man. Don't do that to me, man. KB was like, hey, man, you better shut your motherfucking mouth. You better close your mouth or I'll punch your teeth out your mouth. Richard was like, man. Man, KB was like, keep saying man. Keep saying man. Richard then gets up and walk out the cell and busts the left. As he busts in the left, there's four guards coming his way. These guards stop at KB cell. They're like, yo, you got an issue in here? Now, I'm going to tell y'all the temperament of their voice. They're not being, usually these guards have some type of authority in their voice, right? Not now. They talking all timid. They're like, are you okay in here, man? Is, is is everything straight? Everything okay? KB was like, do it look like everything's straight? I'm straight. I'm super good. It, it's, what's up with y'all? Garth's like, well we, well, we just been getting complaints that you was going around taking things or, or borrowing things and, and not paying people back. KB was like, man, y'all get up out of here with that mess, man. I ain't trying to hear that. I ain't take nothing from nobody, man. Get up out of here with that. One of the guards was like, are you sure everything okay? KB was like, man, get the away from my cell, man, before I nut up on you bitch ass niggas. 
the guards, knowing KB history, didn't want no smoke, so they just walked off. This is a side note, y'all. If that was anybody else, we would have got a cold card on us and off to the hole, we would have went. Them guards would have came in there, whipped us out, hog tied us, and sent us straight to the hole. Now let's get back to the story. Oh yeah, hit that like button before I push that blade. Now KB prison record is full of assaults on guards and inmates. They figure, well if ain't nobody dying, then just let it be. They didn't want to have that headache and that hassle of them getting potentially injured when dealing with KB foolishness. A week done went by now, y'all, when KB is still on this rampage, going into dual sales, taking stuff, walking in dual sales without permission. He done had so many altercations. The captain got fed up with all these grievances from these inmates. He's sitting at his desk like, yo, enough is enough. He got to go. Quick disclaimer, y'all. Now, everything I say after this was told to me by another inmate, okay? On this particular day, I had to go to court. So I did not witness this. When I came back, this was all told to me. Now, here you go. Now, allegedly, the captain came in there with 12 guards, and they told KB to cuff up. Of course, KB refused to cuff up, and the altercation pursued. Now, through the grapevine, it was told to me that KB knocked out four guards, put two guards in the hospital. My bunkie told me they came in there with that rubber bullet gun and was like, boom, boom, hit him twice in the head, knocked him out cold. Allegedly, the first shot dropped him. And then, well, they said the captain stood over him and hit him again in the head to make sure he didn't get up permanently. But KB survived and he ended up getting transferred off the compound. If y'all like these KB stories, let me know in the comment section. Until then, I'm out. If you enjoyed this prison story, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not a member, become a member. The Cash App and the PayPal right there. I'm out. Welcome to another episode of Dante's Prison Stories. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, or I'ma push that blade. One day on the yard, y'all, Lil Carl was on the basketball court getting his Allen Iverson on when this dude by the name of Shy Town fouled the heck out of him while going up for a LeBron James layup. Lil Carl was like, man, Shy Town, foul me like that again. Foul me like that again, I'm telling you. Foul me like that again. Shaitan like, man, shut up, man, and pass the rock. Sure enough, Lil Carl come down the lane and drove hard in the paint to again to deliver another dominant layup. When Shaitan basically bridged him, Lil Carl was in the air and came down sideways. He wiped all the way out. As soon as he hit the floor, he popped right back up and he got nose to nose with Shaitan. Here's the scene, y'all. Why the F you do that? Shy Town like, man, stop. This a ball game. Lil Carl, still one inch away from Shy Town face, was like, man, foul me again. Foul me again. Foul me again. Shy Town was like, if I do, then what? What's going to happen? If I do it again, then what? What's going to happen? Remember, y'all, I told y'all, Lil Carl ain't nothing but 5'3, 125, 130 pounds. So Shy Town like, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Lil Carl backing off like, yeah, you will see, you will see. Now the game that they was playing was a four on four pickup game. The teams was going up to 25, but you had to win by three points. And they wasn't playing for free neither. They was playing for a lot of commissary. So y'all already know what time it is. This was a serious game. Nevertheless, Shy Town and Lil Carl will find themselves opposing each other on the court again. Now, but this time, y'all, the score was 26 to 24 with Shy Town up. They just needed one more point to win. So Shy Town down there about to do a fadeaway. 
And Lil Carl just came up like, boom! Hit him right in the face with that elbow, causing a slit to appear under shot time's eye and so much blood start coming out. Like he got hit with the sword of justice. Man, Shy Town lost it. He went nuts. He was like, he just, he just started throwing punches. Boom, boom, boom. At Carl, only thing Carl could do is just ball up like this and take them punches. Remember y'all, Lil Carl was a little dude. He was about 5'3", 5'4", 120, 125 pounds. Shot Time was as big as me, y'all. He was about 5'11", 220. So he was putting them paws on him. When Shot Time was punching on him, Lil Carl fell on the floor, knocked out. But blood was still flowing from Shot Time's cut on his face. This assault went on for about 15 seconds. After the last Hulk Hogan leg drop, this white guard that we call Buster, because he was a buster. He cocked that shotgun back that was filled with them rubber bullets. He yelled out, first and last warning, inmates stop. Shytown caught up in this rage, then hear that, and boom, boom. Buster blew him out with them rubber bullets. Bow, bow. Shytown screamed out, holding himself, and fell to the floor, and he was up in the fetal position like a newborn baby sucking on his thumb. Y'all already know what time it is. The rest of us inmates, we hit the floor so we didn't get shot. The guards locked the yard down and sent us back to our dorms. Lil Carl and Shottown both went to medical. Now remember y'all, Lil Carl hit Shottown in the face with his elbow, causing all that blood to flow out. Well, Lil Carl ended up getting hit with a cutting charge by the administration. You see, the administration thought that Lil Carl cut him with the sword of justice. And Shy Town didn't clear it up. Check this out, y'all. Lil Carl prison fight record was zero and two now. Now he's bye bye back in the solitary confinement. They sketch another big L on his prison record. The first L came from Gay Nelson. If you haven't seen that video, this is the thumbnail. Y'all go check that video out. So about eight months later, Lil Carl is released from the hole. When Lil Carl hit his block, he get approached by this dude by the name of Sweet Low. Y'all know what time it is. Stay tuned. If you enjoyed this prison story, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't became a member yet, make sure you join. Until next time, I'm out. Welcome to another episode of Dante's Prison Stories. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, or I'm gonna push that blade. This story right here is coming from my second year behind the walls. There was this white dude by the name of Matthew. He was about the age of 34, 35, give or take. You see in prison, either you gonna stay with a bloody knife, or you gonna be the one that's getting bloodied. Me, I chose to keep that four inch bed spring filed down and was ready for anything. I'm gonna be honest y'all, Matthew was a punk, but he wasn't a punk in a homo way. You see, Matthew was the type of dude that felt like nothing was worth fighting for in prison. Basically, if a guy wanted to take his commissary or full press that extortion game on him, such as having his folks on the outside send cash out to various different people in the prison, Y'all know the penitentiary games. So anyway, every Tuesday, we would get a new shipment of inmates. Some of these inmates are brand new to the system. They ain't never been locked up before. And some of these inmates are transfers from other facilities. On this particular shipment, there was a guy that came through by the name of C3. See, I got the article about C3. I'm going to let y'all take a look at it. Pennsylvania man charged after raping and killing 12-year-old daughter of ex-girlfriend, body found in basement freezer. A 39-year-old Pennsylvania man has been charged after admitting to police of raping and killing a 12-year-old daughter of his girlfriend and storing her body in a basement freezer. Earlier this month on Friday, February 10th, the body of the little girl named Elena was found in the basement freezer of a home in Columbia, Pennsylvania. The mother's ex-boyfriend, Jason Shackford, has since been arrested and charged in Elena's death. 
according to Lancaster County District Attorney Office, Shackford told Columbia Borough Police Department officials that he raped and killed a girl at her home and put her in the freezer. This is C3, y'all. This is what that demon did to get locked up. Sick, evil, decrepit. So why Matthew ended up in our pod? Also, C3 found himself on our block also. The guards ended up housing C3 and Matthew in the same cell. Me being about four cells down from them, I could somewhat hear their conversation through the air vents. You see, I stayed up at night a lot of times because I never trust my cellmate. He just seemed real grimy, real slime ball type. So I could never get a comfortable rest while locked up with this dude. But that's a whole nother story, y'all. So it was about the third day of these dudes being together in this cell. Around 3 o'clock in the morning, the guards come through the block screaming and hollering, waking dudes up. It's a full surprise shakedown. Apparently, we had a jailhouse snitch that dropped the kite. The jailhouse snitch ended up writing a kite to the guards talking about that pack was in full effect and it was two cell phones in our block. So they came and shake us down. So we all getting pulled out the cells and we had to strip down to our drawers. We all had to go to the day room. They was taking us two by two to the chaplain to give us a full body shakedown. Y'all know what time it is. Drop the drawers, squat, and cough. During the shakedown, they found a couple bags of that jungle juice, some of that Mississippi wine. You know, some of that Dante's special recipe. So while cats that got caught with contraband was getting rolled up, I noticed Matthew with a beat red face. I'm talking about his face was completely red. I'm thinking to myself, man, what's going on with Matthew? What is going on with him? He got something in the cell or something? What's up with Matthew? You got half of the tank face forward, sitting Indian style on one side of the room and the same is going on for the other side of the room. Everybody's facing face forward, Indian style. Like a face off type of situation. So yeah, y'all, I see Matthew, he is bloodshot red. So after the guards get done shaking us down and violating our personal belongings, we was allowed to go back to our cells to put our stuff back in order. Man, these guards are so treacherous, man. They're so dirty, man. They go through all your stuff that's tearing all your stuff up. If you got pictures and stuff, you got letters from your loved ones, man, they intentionally rip your stuff up and you can't do nothing about it. Now check this out, y'all. The cell doors are still open while we putting our stuff up. Most of the guards done left the pod already. It's about two guards in here but they downstairs and we upstairs. So here I go, put my stuff up and I hear the loudest scream that I ever heard in my life. I'm like, man, what the heck is that? Then I smell like the most craziest demonic smell that you could ever smell. I'm like, man, what the heck is going on, man? Oh man, what is that? And then you still be hearing the scream and I'm like, what the heck is going on? So when I turn and look toward the cell, I see C3 running that way. Remember y'all when I told y'all when we got strip searched, they made a strip down to our drawers. So he's running down the tier in his drawers. And his drawers was bloody red. It was blood everywhere. Remember when I told y'all earlier what C3 was in here for? Well, it finally caught up with him. A family member on the outside that he violated. Yeah, they put a hit out on him. And somebody on our block picked that bounty up. And well, they cashed it in. A Mexican dude took the job and was running short on time. So while the shakedown was happening, the plot to take out C3 was activated. The reason why Matthew was beat red? Earlier, the Mexican dude stepped to him and told him what the plan was. The Mexican cat told Matthew that he wanted him to push that blade on C3 because he had never seen it coming. Matthew being who Matthew was, he said, no, nah, I ain't got nothing to do with this. I ain't got nothing to do with that. So the Mexican dude was like, okay, I'm going to tell you what then. If you don't do it, I'm going to do that to you. All right, y'all, here we go. So when C3 and Matthew was in the cell, the Mexican dude crept in there with the Glock Dookie. If y'all want to know what the Glock Dookie is, the Glock Dookie is when you get feces, sperm, piss, and all other type of bodily fluids and put it in a bag and let it soak and marinate. And then when you go to your victim, you just spread it in their face. That's a Glock Dookie. 
So when he walked in their cell, they turned around and he was like, boom. It got a Matthew face, Matthew mouth. He like, oh, 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 man, what the, what's going on? Right? C3 like, oh, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all, he put tobacco sauce in there too, so it's stinging their eyes too. So he like, oh, oh, I can't see, I can't see. So as he and his boxers doing like this, I can't see, I can't see. The Mexican dude pull out that sword of justice and going, boom, boom, poking him, poking him up, poking him, poking him, right? Not only he poking him up in his chest, but he poking him down there in that area too. Hence, earlier when I told y'all C3 was running down the pie with all this right here, bloody. After the Mexican dude got done stabbing at his genital area, he busts him upside the head with the blade, but the blade broke off in his head. And for Matthew and his troubles, the Mexican dude pulled out a blade from his waistband and he came to Matthew and gave him a... Matthew was collateral damage and he had to go. C3 now loses so much blood now he kind of fainted. He walking, he walking down the tier. And then he just collapsed. After he got done poking Matthew up, Matthew got hit in the heart and he bled out. The results of this melee that just took place, C3 ended up with a closed casket. And Matthew, well, he was a casualty of war. If y'all got love for your boy, make sure y'all bless the Cash App and or the PayPal. Make sure y'all subscribe to my other three channels. The link is in the description. Now let's get back to it. If you enjoyed this prison story, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't became a member yet, make sure you join. Until next time, I'm out. Welcome to another episode of Dante's Prison Stories. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, or I'm going to push that blade. Open up cell 54. As 17 year old Tyrone going to the cell, he see a guy that's laying on the bottom bunk. The guy that's sitting on the bottom bunk, his name is J-Rock and he is from Brooklyn, New York. I'm sorry y'all, J-Rock is a crip from New York. So I guess I gotta say he's from Crooklyn. J-Rock was about 6'3", 245 pounds and he belonged to the local Crip gang in prison. He been down for almost three years and he got seven more years to go. In his days and years living behind the walls, he had been in countless fights and knife fights due to his active role of gang banging behind the walls. To put it short, J-Rock was a hitter and he loved putting in work. When the guard left Tyrone, J-Rock stood up and he asked Tyrone like, yo, you bang? Tyrone was like, no, nah, I don't bang. I don't bang, man. J-Rock then was like, you got family up in here? You got friends up in here? Tyrone like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't know nobody here, man. It, it's, it's just me, man. It's just me. J-Rock then was like, what you in here? What you in here for, G? Like, what you do? Tyrone then said, man, my mom, man, she put me out the crib. And when she put me out the crib, man, her got to a little altercation and I kind of like pushed her out the way because she was throwing my stuff. And when I pushed her out the way, she kind of hit her mouth on the side of the door and now I'm here. J-Rock standing there like, uh-huh, word, okay. So J-Rock like, that's it? That's what got you here? Just a little altercation? Like y'all arguing? Tyrone like, no nah, man, also like, when I kind of like pushed her off the way a little bit, she hit her mouth and it kind of like knocked her front teeth out. So J-Rock like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I knew it was a little bit more to that. I knew it was a little bit more to that. Yo, let me see your paperwork. Tyrone like, um, I, I don't got it. So J-Rock like, look, I don't know you. You don't know me. I don't know what you in here really for. And if you could be here on some kitty charges or something, and there ain't no way you can be in here with me with them type of charges. So I'm gonna need to see that paperwork. Y'all, this is a This side. is what really happened. This is why Tyrone is really locked up. Here you go. See, 17 year old Tyrone, his dad died when he was 12 years old. Tyrone's mother did her best to provide for him. She got her two jobs to support both of them. She became a CNA and she got a job at the local grocery store. 
Tyrone at this time had a lot of anger built up inside of him and he just couldn't understand why his daddy had to be taken away. And what came out of that y'all, he took it out on his mother. A bunch of misplaced anger, a bunch of misplaced emotions. For them five years, he would sometimes push her down and pin her down on the ground when they would have a disagreement about anything. And all this act of violence and disobedience came to a head March 30th, 2019. So here's the story, y'all. Tyrone Ma said, hey, Tyrone, come take out the garbage. Keep in mind, y'all, she just came off of a 12-hour shift doing her CNA work at the group home. So right now, Tyrone is in the back room with his girlfriend, Ajanae. So he in the back there, he back there playing the game. And Ajane just laying on the couch while mama in there making fried chicken and mashed potatoes. So she like, hey, Tyrone, Tyrone, come take out the garbage. He like, dang, ma, I'm playing the game, man. Just chill. I'll take it out in a minute. She like, man, Tyrone, would you come and take this garbage out? I've been at work all day. You ain't been doing nothing. Come take this garbage out. So he like, man, all right, I'm going to do it. Just give me a minute, man. Damn, give me, give me a minute. Damn. So she like, I'm tired of this. She said this to herself. She's like, man, I'm so tired of this, man. I'm tired of this dude being disrespectful. He don't do nothing around here. So she get up. So she heads to his room. And she say, Tyrone, I need, for, I need for you to take the dang garbage out. So she head to his room. And she like, Tyrone, I need for you to come take the dang garbage out. He like, dang, my, I told you. I'm going to take it out, man. Dang. So uh, Janae was like, Tyrone, just go take the garbage out, man. He like, man, all right, man. So he get up and he brushed past his mama. So he goes into the kitchen and he get the garbage together and he head out the door down the driveway to go get rid of the garbage. While this going on, mom's telling Ajane like, okay, it's getting late, it's time for you to go home. So Ajane like, so Ajane like, okay, okay. So as Tyrone outside, here go Ajane coming down the driveway and he stop her, he like, where you going? She like, oh, it's getting late, I just wanna go home. He like, man, my mama told you to leave. She like, no, nah, no, nah, she ain't tell me to leave. The reason why Ajane said that because she been around long enough that she know that Tyrone gonna try to act up on his mama. So she trying to cover for the mama. So he like, man, baby, man, tell me the truth, man. Did she tell you you had to go? She like, no, nah, she didn't tell me. She didn't tell me I had to go. Tyrone like, man, man, girl, man, tell me the truth, man. Did she tell you that? Did she tell you that? So he keep pressing and pressing and pressing her. After two or three minutes of him pressing her, she's like, yeah, yeah, but it's cool, it's cool. Yeah, she told me I had to go get late. So he just storm off and he run up the driveway and he bust through the door and he get in his mama's face like, B, B, I told you, I told you, you don't, you don't run nothing up in here. So the mama and him going back and forth and he grab her by the shoulder, now he's shaking her. He's way taller than her and he way bigger than her. And he does this on a normal way whenever they have a disagreement. So as he's shaking it, right, they just going back and forth, going back and forth. He's screaming at her. She like, let me go, let me go. Ajaneda came into the house. She like, let her go, let her go. Tyrone, let her go, let her go. Tyrone with all his strength, pick up his mama off her feet and attempt to slam her on the floor. But as he was slamming her, her head hit the counter snapped her neck she died instantly so when she hit the flow tyrone like man man i told you i told you mama wasn't moving mama wasn't moving i like wake up wake up miss blah 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 miss blah 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 wake up wake up tyrone realizing like oh shoot i knocked my mama out he didn't know that she was dead y'all he didn't know this woman just lost her life. So he's trying to wake her up. Ma, ma, wake up. Mama, mama, stop playing. Mama, wake up. Ajane got to screaming because mama started having blood coming out her nose. Mama started having blood coming out her ears. Got real bad, y'all. So that is what really happened. This is why he really up in there. This is why he don't want to show J-Rock that paperwork. They rock like, hey, I'm not trying to hear that, man. I need to see that paperwork. I need to see that paperwork right now. So dude like, man, bro, bro, man, I, man, bro, I, I told you I'm going to get it to you. Jay rock already know what's going on. So Jay rock put it in his head that, yo, he feel like dude got his paperwork on him. 
dude got his paperwork in his laundry bag. So J Rock gets up and grabs dude laundry bag and start going through it. That's what dude had all his property in. So dude like, man, what you doing? What you doing, bro? Bro, what you doing? Bro, what you doing? J Rock like, man, sit down and shut up, man. Sit your butt down. J Rock would have put them hands on him, so dude didn't really want to smoke. So he like, bro, man, I told you I ain't got J Rock pull it out. Pull out the paperwork. He like, oh, so you ain't got it, huh? You better hope you ain't touch no kids. You better hope you ain't touch no kids. So he reading, and he reading, and he's like, oh, oh, you killed your moms. Oh, you killed your moms. Guess what? My mama dead. Somebody killed my mama two years ago. On my first year, me being locked up, I lost my mama. Yeah. And you killed your mama? Are you talking about y'all got into a little argument? Man, boom, he punched him right in the mouth. Dude was like, oh, man, my chill. So your bro chill, your bro chill. J-Rock was like, you know what? You know what? He had me went to the bars, look, looked out there, put the white sheet up. Bag Tyrone to the corner. Like, so you want to kill your... You want to hit your mama? You want to hit, hit your mama? Want to disrespect your mama? My mama gone. My mama gone. She ain't never coming back. You had a mama out there. And you going to do that to your mama? Tyrone all bought up like, bro, bro, stop hitting me, bro. It got to a point that J-Rock just got to choking him out. Like, I told you. I told you. He choked him out till he passed out. Let this be a warning. Let this video serve as a warning. There's a lot of Tyrones out there with a lot of misplaced anger out there that be taking it out on your moms. If you live, if your mama is taking care of you and your father is not in the house for whatever reason, man, respect that woman. Respect that woman. You only got one mama, one mother. That's it. It's dudes that's locked up that's doing life. I done seen cats that lost their mama or their dad or their granny while locked up and lost it. This is why J Rock put them hands on them. Because he ain't got no mama. His mama gone. And then you're going to take your mama life? There's people in there that's waiting on people like you. And I'm not trying to ride down on you youngsters that's, that's out there doing this. I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to hopefully y'all can see this video and be like, you know what? My mom is taking care of me. Mom is holding it down. Maybe I should take out the garbage. Maybe I should do the dishes. Maybe I should just say, hey, mom. Hey, mom, can, let me brush your hair. You had a long day. Let me rub your feet, mom. You ain't got to clean up nothing, mom. Hey. Prison is real, y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all what happened to Tyrone. Tyrone ended up losing his life after three months of being behind the walls. He got a beating every day. Not by just J Rock, by a couple other cats in there. Number one, number one, because he wouldn't fight back. And I'm gonna tell y'all, when he lost his life, nobody took his life. He took his own life. If you enjoyed this prison story, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't became a member yet, what you waiting on? If you're not subscribed, what you waiting on? Bless that Cash App. Bless that PayPal. I enjoyed y'all. Hopefully y'all enjoyed me. I'm out. There was a white man by the name of Howard. Howard was given a four-year sentence for violating an underage teenager. You see, he got busted in 2017 in one of them Chris Hansen meetups. You know, when they meet somebody on the chat, then they go to their house. Well, Howard got busted and caught up in one of them situations, which led to law enforcement going to his house and taking his computers and all his recording devices. Let me ask y'all something. What do y'all think they found on his computers? Due to YouTube policies, I can't say what it is, but y'all can say what it is. Let me know in the comments section. Now, for the first 21 days of Howard being locked up, he did not get assaulted or beat up. Why this didn't take place? Because didn't nobody know his charges. In fact, if you go up to somebody and ask them what their charges are or their paperwork, you can go to the hole. So Howard was safe for now. 
It was May 16th at 1.15 p.m. when this young black dude was put in a cell with Howard. Now, Howard was one cell away from me, so I could hear everything that was going on in that cell. Now, at this time, y'all, we're going to call the young black dude D. D was kind of like me. He was a neutron. You ask, what is a neutron? A neutron is a person that is not affiliated with no gang or no organization in the prison. When you're not a part of a gang or organization in prison, you are liable to get beat up, extorted, and possibly graped. If you ain't about your business and willing to push that blade, well, them things can happen to you. Matter of fact, one of the two or the three will happen to you. Now, D been locked down for at least about two months now, and he is feeling the pressures of prison. So he is considering joining the gangster disciples for protection. Here's the thing though, when you join a organization, it's required that you gotta shed some blood on the white inmate. Either you're gonna do it with the rumble or you're gonna have to push that blade. Either way, blood must be shed. And this is where the story begins. Yo, Howard, what you do to get up in here? At this point, y'all, D is talking to Howard in the cell. Howard like, man, I don't really wanna talk about it. D was like, man, you look like one of them freak creek dudes. Howard was like, I can assure you, I am not like that. I'm not one of them type of guys. D then was like, if, well, if you ain't like that, let me see your paperwork. I gotta make sure you ain't one of them type of dudes that be touching on kids, man, cause you got that type of face. You giving me them type of vibes. After D finished his statement, Howard got up and left the cell. I'm not sure where Howard went, but I know he walked past my cell. So about two minutes later, a guard walked past my cell and stopped at D and Howard's cell. Now remember y'all, I told y'all I could hear everything that's going on in that cell because I'm right next door to it. So when D asked the officer, did he check Howard paperwork? And the officer said, yeah, he ain't here for touching kids. I heard D say, say less. Howard got bad charges, y'all. Now that gave D the green light to pop off from Howard. Now in this prison that we was at, if your cellie got bad charges, you gotta get him up out of there. It's your job to get him out of there or somebody gonna get you and him up out of there. Plus this was a win-win for D. Not only he get to push that you know what on Howard and this is initiation to get into the game. So D was more than willing to get this done. Now here go y'all, it's 9 p.m. lockdown. Time for all of us to go to our cells and lock down for tonight. Now earlier that day, D went to the GDs and let them know what the play was. He let them know, tonight, tonight, I'm knocking this piece off. So the homies gave their blessing and they said, get on it. Now this particular night y'all, we have one guard. And around 1 a.m., this guard would go to sleep between 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. The hour before shift change at 5 a.m. These CEOs up here sleeping on a job. So D knew he had four hours to get it in. Now y'all, Howard is sleeping at the bottom bunk and D is at the top bunk. D hop up off the top bunk and go to the toilet and start peeing. Howard down there sleeping like a baby. Now Howard head is kind of facing the toilet. So as D peeing, he kind of swings it that way and he peeing on Howard. Howard like, what the, hey, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what, what are you doing? Now this is when I woke up y'all. So D got to start punching on him like, shut up, shut up man, be quiet, be quiet. He got to punch, be punching on him. Now at this point in time y'all, Howard like, help, no. help. No. D done grabbed him by the mouth like, Go mouth. He like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Nah. So Howard voice is muffled at this ah. point. Now I couldn't no. see what happened. No. I couldn't see what was going on. No. But I only can but I only can assume no. that D done choked him out. Because I didn't hear no. too much after that. No. Later that morning, we had to stand outside of our cells for count. Well, D was out there, but Howard wasn't. What do y'all think D did to Howard? Let me know in the comment section. When the guard got to D's cell, he was like, yo, where your bunkie at? Why he ain't off the bed? D was like, I don't know. The guard then went in the cell like, hey man, get your butt up. Howard did not respond to him. Plus the cover was over his head. 
The guard like, hey man, I said, get up. The guard then was like, hey, I said, before he said, I said, D ran up in the cell, was like, boom, boom, boom. He got the punching on the guard, which led to a scuffle in the cell. When that happened, y'all, I instantly ducked off and went in my cell because I didn't want no problems, no issues, no part of that. It was three guards down at the bottom tier that shot up there and they got up in that cell and they worked D out. After the situation was handled, it was discovered that Howard was beaten to death. It was officially ruled death by strangulation. I guess y'all D took it too far, but hey, this prison, right? D would go on and catch a body street charge for this murder, which led him being shipped to a level five closed custody security facility. And well, Howard, if he didn't ask Jesus to forgive him for his sins, a one-way trip to hell. When D arrived to Red Onion, which all high-risk Virginia inmates go to, when it's the end of the line for them, you know, the last stop, he ended up having his life taken away from him because of a guard that was on the bad end of a Glock Dookie. You see, D was in there on gang gang time. He earned his spot in the GD organization for putting in that work on Howard. During this time there at Red Onion, D became a problem for the administration and the officers. He stayed bucking on them COs. And when I say he was bucking on them COs, he stayed with that sword of justice and he would push it and they knew that. It just wasn't the guards neither. He was applying that pressure on the inmates also. All in the name of gang, gang. So one day, D would find himself in the shoe which is the hole inside of the hole. When D was back there, he kept getting into it with this certain guard. This guard was spitting his food, tear up his mail, and he kept antagonizing him. The older G was like, yo D, check this out. This is how you get back at him. Get your water bottle, put some feces in it, put some urine in it, and just let it sit, let it stew. And when that CEO come back around, push it all up in his face. Make sure it get all up in his mouth and all up in his nose. And yeah, D did it too. He put some urine in a bottle and some feces. Closed it tight. Put it there in the corner. One day, this particular guard was on one. You know, on that BS. When he came to D cell to put his tray in a slot, D rose up like, surprise, boom! Feces, urine, all that. Went all up in his mouth all up in his nose, all in his eyes. He like, ah, 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 D all in the background like, yeah, yeah, I told you, I told you, you I told you, you How does my taste? How does my taste? The cold was called, y'all, and the goon squad was on their way to extract D up out of his cell. When they got in front of the cell, they said, yo, cough up, cough up inmate, now. With everybody surprised, D cuffed up with no incident. I guess he figured he got his off. Now this is where the story takes an evil twist. The officer that got hit with the Glock Dookie told the lead officer that he was gonna take lead and transporting him. D was talking real crazy to him as he was leading him off the tier. When they got to that elevator where the cameras don't work at, the guards shoved D up in there with the other two guards and they got the beat, you know. Boom, 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 boom. They was beating the brakes off of D. Three on one. D is handcuffed, can't do nothing but take them blows. When they finally got off the elevator, D could barely walk. So the other two guards have to hold him up like this and drag him. When they got to the isolation tank, they stripped him butt booty naked and beat him some more. When the other two officers left out of there, the one that got hit with the Glock Dookie looked like this and looked like that. Then he pulled out his you know what and he got the urinating all on D. D couldn't move, D was helpless. With one last act of defiance, D reached up no. and grabbed the no. officer's nutcrackers. Oh, ah. oh. Right, 
He got the banging D out, punching him in his head, punching him in the head. Boom, boom. Let me go. Let me go. A guard came in that heard this commotion. He came with the billy stick. Came up on D and was like, boom. In the right upside, it said, cracked this whole dome piece wide open. Rest in peace, D. A lot of y'all cats do not get it. When you find yourself locked up, you have no friends at all. These dudes are murderers, liars, and thieves. And some of these cats in here like men. I don't know who told y'all that this ain't what it is, but this is exactly what that is. If you can't throw these or get a hold of some steel and know how to use that steel, you are in trouble. You better join the gang. You better join the organization so somebody can have your back. But be careful because when you sign up for these gangs and these organizations and you got one or two years to do, you can do, you can end up crashing out and getting a whole lot of time added to your sentence. I done seen it time and time again with dudes that wasn't built like that. Mm, Y'all ain't never going home. You crashed out. You went in there and pushed that blade on the op. Now it's over. Yeah. Y your girlfriend that you had out there on the outside, she was going to wait for you for them two years. Yeah, she was going to do that. Your little daughter that was one year old, that she would have been, she would have turned three when you got out. Now she's going to be 35 when you eligible for parole. So think about that. Really think about that. Number one, stop committing crimes. Stop being a criminal. Go get a job and stop complaining and making an excuse. This is the Dante Show Network and I'm out. The Dante Show. Welcome to Dante's Prison Stories. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, or I'ma push that blade. If you the type of person while locked up in prison that need that, it's the return of the ROC, I need for y'all to pay attention real close. Chasing that ROC while locked up can get you in a real bad predicament. If you run up a debt that you cannot pay, well, I want y'all to meet white boy Oscar. Oscar was from Flint, Michigan, and in the free world, he was a mechanic. Y'all know the type when y'all don't want to pay them shop prices. Y'all go to the local mechanic in the neighborhood. He'll get your brakes done. He'll get your rotors done. He'll get your oil changed. He'll even change your alternator, right? Y'all know the type. Stop playing military mind games, y'all, and hit that like button. We finna get right to it. This is the story of Oscar. You see, Oscar was a slave to that moon rock. And I'm not talking about cannabis neither. Oscar would find himself in and out of the county for possession. And the last time, which was the last time, the judge told him, Oscar, if I see you in front of me again, you will do one year in the MDOC prison system. And well, Oscar found himself right in front of the judge. One year in a day off you go, Oscar, to Jackson State Penitentiary. Bye-bye. Got Oscar mama out there in the courtroom. Oscar, Oscar, baby, I love you, Oscar. Oscar, please, judge, don't send my baby away. Oscar, just need help. Please, judge, don't send my baby off to prison. Oh, man, why, why did you have to say, Oscar? So I'm laying in my bed, y'all reading the Bible, reading John 16, so God loved the world that he gave his own begotten son. When Oscar hit the block, so as Oscar and the new inmates coming down our tier, just like clockwork, you got dudes out there cat calling and playing military mind games on the new inmates, seeing who gonna crack first. They shouting out all type of obscenities. Hey man, that is fat. Hey man, uh, he got some good lips. I bet his lips can crazy stuff, right? I mean, these cats is getting verbally assaulted. These dudes were doing too much. Yeah, bring that white boy here, man. Yeah, let me clap them cheeks. Yeah. Yeah, hey, listen, y'all. They was doing too much, man. And some of them dudes were serious. So I got my, so I got my mirror 
And I'm like, oh snap, that's Oscar from the east side. Sidebar, y'all. I know Oscar from the outside. You see, he fixed my brakes and my rotors in 2015 on my Tahoe. He got me right. Now let's get back to Oscar. So as I'm looking through my mirror on the tear, I'm like, white boy Oscar and finally found himself in the dog pile. So he finally got in his cell and settled in. At this point, y'all, we was on a mandatory shakedown where the special unit that specialized in making inmates' lives a living hell by going through their personal belongings, tossing property like it's trash, your pictures, your love letters, your poems, being grimy, putting a whole figure in your peanut butter, looking for contraband, that's going through all your stuff. So I say that to say this, if you a fiend, a dope fiend, and your bunkie didn't have that bag while we was on lockdown, you was done. You was going to be going through it. And well, Oscar was a junkie and he was going through it. Now we was going on our third day on this shakedown. Now I didn't really too much know who Oscar was in the cell with, but Later on, I will find out that his cellmate ended up getting a hold of that ROC. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And word spread it that Oscar was down there turning tricks for his bunkie for that ROC. And I must say allegedly, because I didn't hear it or I didn't see it with my own two eyes. But this is prison, so it is what it is. Before we go any further with this story, Oscar is not the guy real name. I'm not going to say his real name because he might got family out here. He might got kids and I don't want to put this man on blast. I mean, I do got a heart, right? Yo, felons, listen up. This is a telltale sign that the jail about to go on lockdown. Whenever you see a whole bunch of shipment of the white star phone containers, yeah, just know to get ready because it's coming. Whatever debts you got out there, you better go collect them. If you got some of that jungle juice, you know, some of that Dante special recipe, you know, the drink, you better flush it or you better drink it or you better sell it because they coming. Lockdown, baby. Now, after we done been violated in this shakedown, it was back to regular programming. I didn't see Oscar right away. So I asked one of my homies that was a couple of cells down from Oscar, like, yo, what happened to the white dude that was in that cell? My homeboy was like, hey man, the guards told me that that white dude was in there getting assaulted. You know what I'm, y'all know what I'm talking about. And dude got put in the hole when he went to medical. I was like, word? He was like, yeah, he was down there. You know what time it is, you know. I was like, well, all right. But I heard through the grapevine, y'all, that Oscar ran up a debt with this dude. And instead of him paying that debt off, he dropped a dime and said that this dude basically graped him. And well, off to the hole, dude went. As always, y'all, I can't tell a man how to program. All I can do is, well, tell y'all these prison stories. I'm out. If you enjoyed this prison story, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not a member, become a member. The Cash App and the PayPal right there. I'm out.